So, uh, who am I? Well, I'm um, Erik SM on uh, Drupal.org. Um, I work at uh, New Media in Trondheim, uh, in Norway, uh, as a developer. Uh, I am kind of a beer nerd, but I would like to point out I'm not a beer snob. It's a huge difference. Yes, a question. Oh, okay, I should talk louder? Okay, I'll try, I'll try. Sorry. <laughs> And also, I've uh, pointed out in my slides, I'm not good at soldering, but uh, uh, I guess those of you in the back won't see it, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But probably those on the first row, I'm not sure, we'll see what happens. So, how many hairs, uh, here are a developer, by the way? Oh, okay, so <laughs> probably a lot of you know what Internet of Things is, probably since it's a buzzword and everything, but I uh, copy-pasted something from Wikipedia anyway. And it says the Internet of Things, or IoT for short. It's a network of physical objects or things embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and network connectivity which enables these objects to collect and exchange data. And of course, that's just a definition. I like to think of it more like these are things in the physical world uh, talking to the digital world, which is the internet. And since almost all of you are developers, I know we are not that comfortable in the physical world, but don't worry, we'll also talk about the digital world. So the physical world is not that scary. Just So what we will cover in this session, um, I will talk about uh, some communication patterns and flow between things and uh, uh, Drupal, and we'll talk some, uh, some, uh, something about the authentication and security, about how you uh, uh, secure these communication patterns, and we will have animated GIFs, blinking LEDs, cats and dogs, and also animated GIFs of blinking LEDs, cats and dogs. I would like to point out we've already had an animated GIF of a blinking LED, actually. I think this is an illustration of a communication pattern, maybe, not sure. You can um, uh, attribute it to whatever you want. So <clears throat> what we will not cover, because uh, you can find these kinds of uh, tutorials on the internet or something, because there are other ways to do Drupal and Internet of Things, or I mean Internet of Things in general, for example. Uh, for example, you can install Drupal on a Raspberry Pi, uh, because you can install Apache and uh, PHP and everything on that, and attach some wires, enable the PHP module if it's Drupal 7, and create a node with a PHP filter, reads the get parameter, xx sudo something, and you know, that kind of works to turn on a LED, but uh, I'm personally not a fan. Some people might like it, not sure. But uh, maybe that's a silly example, but another actual example that you can find is people are um, uh, creating a Drupal site on the Raspberry Pi, exposing it on the internet uh, so they can, for example, read the temperature from their office, for example. That is very convenient in a way, but, uh, you know, thereby you're also exposing your internal network to the internet. So, personally, I'm not a fan. If you like that sort of thing, we will unfortunately not, not cover that today. So, uh, of course, these things are, you know, better if there's some demos with it and, uh, you know, wires included and internet and everything. And so I was weighing this, should I demo or not? Uh, and this is an exhaustive list of the pros for demoing. What could possibly go wrong, right? And this is the list of uh, cons. That's a horrible idea. And uh, also, I saw this illustration once about what live coding demos in conferences are. I'm not going to do some live coding, but live demos, I guess. So, you know, weighing all of these together, let's go to the first demo. So, it's an offline status checker with an ESP8266, and, you know, we have the blinking LEDs here. So, this is the thing we'll be using. It's not a very fancy thing, and it's not a very bright LED, so we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, so with any luck now, this one should uh, turn green. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so, not finished yet. I have this uh, Drupal site, 
And, uh, you know, um, in contrast to the example I explained earlier, this is actually on the internet. That's the address. You can go in there and try to hack it and ruin my demo if you want. It's actually on the internet. So we're going to go ahead and put the site into maintenance mode. Wow, huge resolution. And so what we are expecting now is that if I put it into maintenance mode, this one will turn red, right? Probably you in the back probably can't see this. So I can just say, say that it's working and you will believe me, right? <laughs> OK. Oh, it turned red. Hey. OK. So that was the hello world, right? Uh, so what happens here? Uh, this thing, it's not a very smart thing. Its, uh, it's processor is not very smart even. It's um, just querying the Drupal site, uh, uh, like a one-way communication over and over again. Is your status code 200? If yes, show a green light. If no, show a red light. Very stupid thing, right? And so it's not even very Drupal specific because, you know, it could theoretically just query google.com and, you know, turn on the green light, hopefully, most of the times. And uh, at this point, we're not using any uh, authentication because, you know, this is public uh, info. Uh, if the uh, site has a 200 status or not, you can just check it in your browser, right? So we're going to go ahead and turn on the site again. And uh, have a second demo. And uh, it's already getting kind of silly, but... What we'll be doing here is, um, let's see. We ha I have this thing here. It's a microcontroller called a Tessel. It runs JavaScript, which is convenient uh, if you like that. It's very inconvenient if you don't, I guess. And um, for a web developer, you already know JavaScript, so that's convenient. And it has these modules, among them, uh, infrared module. And so I have with me, I hope, I forgot to check actually. Oh yeah. So this is my TV remote from home. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to try to turn off the Drupal site with this TV remote. So something happened. It turned red. And let's go ahead and check the actual site that is on the internet. Should now be in maintenance mode. And it is. That's lucky. So we can turn it back on, I guess, with the TV remote. And it turns back green, you can see. And uh, at this point, it's actually back online. Yay! Okay, so what happens here? Um, this microcontroller receives the IR signal and then it makes a request to the Drupal site that uh, by coincidence has a path exposed to toggle the maintenance mode. And as you may know, uh, having this path exposed is kind of like you don't want anyone to request that because you can just use it, do it to, through a browser and then anyone can toggle the maintenance mode. So this actually has some uh, authentication, and it's a very simple one. It actually uses the session cookie, right? It uses the permission system in Drupal. So it's the user logged in. In this case, it's actually the microcontroller. And then you can uh, uh, are uh, authenticated to toggle the maintenance mode. And it's kind of headless. I just put that in there uh, because it interacts with the interface without using the interface, more or less. But as you know, these are uh, also a buzzword, which we will expand on later. Uh, so let's talk a bit about uh, pros and cons about ses session authentication, because you know it's really easy to set up. You can just copy the uh, cookie out of your browser and then just start doing requests with it, and uh, it's uh, robust in the way that it uh, uses the permission system as the regular front end. So you, we know that it's battle tested. But there are some cons. For example, it's not per persistent. Uh, it could be time based, or maybe it's in memory, depending on how you store your sessions, so it's very inconvenient. Uh, it could just stop working at any time. Luckily for me, it didn't right now. Uh, 
and it follows the browser session. So the browser session, which I copied the session cookie out of, if I logged out of that browser session, I would actually log out my microcontroller, which is very inconvenient. And of course, if the session gets compromised uh, by an attacker, uh, then uh, you actually don't uh, just expose this uh, path to toggle the maintenance mode, you actually expose uh, uh, the user account with it. You can just be that user then and you know create a new super account or whatever. That is not very, uh, very, very good. So, of course, you should also always use HTTPS because, uh, I mean, sniffing a cookie is not very hard over Wi-Fi, so... And also, there's no excuse at this point. It's free, right? So, third demo. Um, if you're very um, paying very close attention, you might have seen that thing there. It's a counter. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I kind of wanted to have that as a thing also with the segment thing, but, you know, there's only so many USB ports and so many wires you can set up for a session. So let's just pretend that is a thing. It's a counter, at least. So what we're going to do here, I think I need to refresh it because I changed network. So what we're going to do here is add some content. And um, whoa! So you can see it increments the counter when a uh, node is created, and we can also see. Man, it's slow. <laughs> I'm using my phone's network, so I wouldn't have to rely on the uh, Wi-Fi here, but uh, it turns out it might have backfired. <laughs> Come on. Okay, this is going to be a problem. Is it even online? It says so. Oh, for fuck's sake. What could possibly go wrong, right? Luckily, I actually have videos of all of the demos, so theoretically, I could show that. Okay, uh, I'm just going to see if this helps. Okay, what is your? Is this one or? Okay, sorry about that. We can just uh, skip ahead and see if it uh, works itself out afterwards. Um, I can just show the video demo, maybe. Let's hope that works. Yeah, so here you can see I'm publishing a node, and uh, it's uh, incrementing the counter, and uh, after that, I'm uh, unpublishing the node, and it's decrementing the counter. And you can also see uh, that I'm uh, publishing it to the front page. And no, I'm, I mean, uh, removing it from the front page, and now it's published. And then, 
At this point, I'm uh, adding it back to the front page and publishing it. So then the counter increments again. So the point being, of course, let's see, uh, that uh, it, uh, it, it reflects the front page. So what happens here is uh, that Drupal saves a node, and uh, when it, that happens, publishes a key in Redis. And uh, uh, then this counter is communicating with a Node.js server that is listening for this key in Redis. So uh, then uh, when uh, this Node.js server uh, finds that something has happened on the Drupal site, it tells the thing to go and count the nodes on the front page. And then uh, it's doing a REST query uh, with the uh, core uh, module uh, REST as an anonymous user, so it will reflect the state of the front page, uh, you know, which nodes are published, which are published to the front page, and so on. So uh, this is actually, in theory, both decoupled and headless because it's communicating with a, a third party or a, a different server to um, uh, manage uh, when it's supposed to use the headless mode. So it uses the headless mode only when it needs it. So that's another communication pattern. Um, OK, we can try this. Is my internet back or not? Promising. Oh, yeah. OK, so what was it? Yes. So I have also this thing. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi uh, with a sensor. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start this. And uh, we're going to look at the counter first. Although that's probably disconnected now. <laughs> So you can see the counter says it's two uh, things on the front page now. And uh, you can see that it has posted the temperature here. And uh, yeah, that was the demo. <laughs> so uh, what happens here? Well, the Raspberry Pi um, senses the temperature with the sensor. And every three minutes and on start, it sends the temperature to uh, the um, Drupal site, and so in three minutes, this counter will hopefully also increment. We'll see. And it uses API keys uh, for uh, uh, authentication. I probably didn't write that, but yeah, that's that's the point there. And the API keys are per user. If they are valid, and all is posted. So this is an example of authentication strategy uh, with API keys, and it also uses the core REST module, but with a custom. Uh, 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 authentication strategy. So you can provide your own REST uh, uh, authentication strategy. In core, there's the basic out, and this is a custom one. And the other thing it uh, is an example of is a custom uh, uh, REST resource, because it just exposes this temperature resource and um, uh, uses it to create nodes. And so let's talk a bit of pros and cons here. So. The pros is that if a key here is compromised, the key would only give access to this one specific thing that we have defined as a, a would allow access to this REST uh, resource, and not the whole permission system, and not the account, like we saw with the session authentication. And then if you find out that keys can be regenerated, uh, now uh, keys are compromised, we can regenerate them on a system-wide uh, um, scale or per user. Uh, and they can be persistent forever if you want. It doesn't follow the user that is logged in, and uh, doesn't uh, you know store uh, the session in memory or anything. It's evaluated on every request. And of course, cons is still you have to use HTTPS. It still can be sniffed, and you can expose that resource. Okay, at this point, it's getting very silly. Let's hope it still works. It's the fifth demo. So, let's see if this works. So, let's go to this Drupal site we have here. We're going to add some content. I said I would, you know, have animated GIFs of cats, right? So, let's do that.
I have a folder called cats. All right. So I'm offline again, that's convenient. Okay, let's just skip to the video again. Hope that things will work afterwards. So here we can see I have a Arduino there. And uh, I'm po it's kind of hard to see it, but I'm posting a picture of a dog at this point. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I do so, it's very hard to see on this screen, but uh, when I do, it triggers uh, the maintenance mode. And so when I unpublish it again, it also triggers the maintenance mode. Uh, and why is that? Well, let's see. Uh, of course, this is the explanation. It's the Arduino super speed processor that does a GIF frame by frame analysis, recognizes a dog, you know, nukes the server, whatever. And, uh, or not, I, I just really wanted to put that GIF in there, sorry. So it's a, what happens is the, it's the same decoupled Node.js backend that receives the node title as a key and it finds the word dog in it. And what happens then is I have this Arduino has uh, an IR transmitter uh, connected to it. And by pure coincidence, it transmits the same signal as my TV remote. And as we know, this other thing here is also listening for this TV remote signal. And so uh, it actually ends up triggering the resource that is triggering the um, maintenance mode and, you know, in turn uh, puts the side offline and the lead turns red in theory. Uh, yeah. So at this point, I would like to say something about, uh, you know, dependencies, devices services and uh, stuff like that, because an interesting observation with this kind of uh, uh, domino effect that we see here with the picture of a dog and, and uh, remote signals and stuff like that is that the Drupal side doesn't really care about what is connected to it or what is communicating with it. It just, you know, it uh, publishes a key and someone can do something with it. And the Node.js backend doesn't really care where the Redis publish came from. It could come from the command line, it could come from a Drupal site, it could come from wherever. It just relays that information to the connected clients. And the Arduino here, it doesn't really care if the data it receives comes from Drupal or the Node.js backend. It uh, doesn't really care if the IR signal it sends will be picked up by, by that other microcontroller or if it actually triggers a TV on-off, for example. And this Tesla, that's the uh, microcontroller that receives the IR signal, it doesn't really care about if it came from a remote or if it came from an Arduino. Or, in theory, it doesn't even care that it is sending the request to a Drupal site to toggle a maintenance mode. It's just simple logic, get signal, send a request. And the Drupal site, in turn, uh, that toggles the maintenance mode doesn't really care about the origin of the toggle request. You could do that through a browser if you want. It just knows that, okay, this request is authenticated, I should toggle the maintenance mode. And of course, the status monitoring with the LEDs, it doesn't really care about anything at all. It's just really stupid. So all of these things are, uh, while they are connected, they are not really connected. They, they don't depend on each other. So, is my internet back now? The light went red? Okay. I'm not sure if that's a good sign or not. Let's just try, see what happens. So, I have this thing here. In this case, it's actually my computer, but it could be another Raspberry Pi in theory. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Post a picture of a cat. It's really slow, but it seems to be working. Okay. So.
So let's see. Here's a picture of a cat. That's funny. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, but the really funny part would be if I posted a picture of a dog, right? Because that would toggle the maintenance mode. Post a picture of a dog. Okay, let's see what happened. It's a picture of a dog. But are we offline? Maybe not. Okay, there's probably one step that was missing. Damn it! So close! Okay, one more try, one more try. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that's probably, it's just really crappy thing, so. <laughs> okay, so the Arduino went offline. I see. <laughs> One minute, I just have to restart this. Okay, let's try one more time. Post a picture of a dog. So many things can go wrong with this one. <laughs> And the counter displays zero. No! OK, then. Close enough, close enough. We can view the demo, maybe. No, it's with sound. It's probably not again. So what happens here? Well, nothing really happened, but uh, what could have happened, close, is uh, that this thing is recording, uh, in this case my computer, and it uh, does some uh, voice recognition, and if the word cat or dog is found, it poses a node and with an animated GIF of that, of course. Uh, with a REST module posting a file entity, then post uh, the core REST module uh, uh, a node entity with this file attached to it. And then the node has a title based on a keyword, for example, a picture of a dog. And as we know, if a node has the title, uh, the, the word dog in it, the IR signal for the TV on off is sent by the Arduino. And if the IR signal for a TV on off is sent, the other microcontroller will toggle the maintenance mode and then the LED should go red. Really closely did. So. Let's talk a bit about authentication with the REST module. Uh, in this example, I use the basic out module in core. Uh, and uh, this does not interfere with the reg regular user sessions as the session authentication. And will, in theory, only provide access to the REST resources that has this authentication strategy enabled. But of course, in practice, if you actually are able to see a basic out header, you are not much of a head, uh, hacker if you can't figure out the username and password. But uh, um, also, of course, still super important with HTTPS because otherwise it would be e really easy to sniff out these headers. So uh, we're closing in on the on the finish here. So uh, takeaways from this session: uh, always use HTTPS. There really is no excuse. It's free now. Everyone should use it all the time. 
uh, and uh, for you know communicating with the things uh, and your Drupal site, there are different strategies you can uh, use for both authentication and security. And there are different patterns you can use for uh, communicating. Uh, we have talked about the decoupled and headless, and also um, just uh, being uh, not dependent on other services. And of course, a takeaway is that Drupal 8 is awesome because it enables us to do these things. And uh, another takeaway, I don't know if I mentioned, is use HTTPS. And uh, a key takeaway also that I'm not very good at soldering, that might have been the reason why some of the demos failed here. And also a key takeaway is this upcoming GIF, of course. It's that uh, it tells us something, I think, about, uh, about how we should uh, how we should um, go with these things? It's just dive into it. Maybe things will, you know, uh, go an unexpected way, and uh, it will still be awesome. And just uh, having fun. And also, I think this il also illustrates, because as you can see, he's wearing a helmet. It illustrates security also. So <laughs> just remember that. And uh, thank you. And uh, uh, I'm gonna. This is online, and I have uh, links to all of the modules and uh, the hacky scripts that I use to, you know, publish things and stuff like that. So if you want to check that out, feel free. And uh, questions? Yeah. I do. As you can see. Okay, this one? Okay, it works without, but you can also use it with if you want. Huh? No, no, I haven't. I haven't a redirect, so. Oh, sorry, I wanted to repeat the question. It was that he was pointing out that this demo site was not on HTTPS, but it's, it's just not forced HTTPS. It works on both, so, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, okay. So the question is, uh, did I have much trouble working with the ESP 8266? Well, um, I have to be honest. Uh, preparing for this demo, I had to reflash the firmware twice to get the script working. So I guess some trouble, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to work with, and uh, but. Once, once you get it working, it's very stable. It is really, if you have a stable internet connection, not like uh, my uh, tethered uh, uh, mobile data. Here. I have one running in my uh, apartment. It's been running for several months, not stopped once. Just it just works. Uh, so the question is how, how uh, big a range is uh, on the chip for ESP specifically, or? Um, I haven't really battle tested it, but uh, especially because mine sits like one meter away from my router. So that works very well. Uh, but it works in my kitchen, that's like 10 meters. I don't know, uh, I haven't uh, tested it in, you know, outside across a field or something. Sure, sure. It's no problem. It's, uh, I don't know, it's like other um, Wi-Fi enabled devices, I would say. Seemingly, at least. So that part I actually haven't had much trouble with at all with the ESP. The Wi-Fi seems to be working very fine, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, also, uh, I have this slide. Thanks to our sponsors, yeah. Okay, thank you.